The one thing that you'll start realizing when you're becoming a web developer or a programmer is that you're always going to run into new things that you got to learn, right? There's always some new piece of technology or new thing that you're going to be exposed to and you're going to have to spend some time trying to understand it. So when I was working on this newsletter manager application, one thing that it made me realize is that I have really no idea how people send out subscription emails. I've never built that before. I've never done it before, which is crazy because, I mean, you see that on basically every single website, right? Every site usually has like a little input box at the bottom that says like subscribe and, you know, you click it. And then you start getting junk mail every day for the rest of your life. But I never actually took the time to actually build out a system to do that. And in theory, it seems pretty straightforward, right? You basically just take the input email, you store it in a database, but then you need a way to loop over all those email addresses and send out emails. And that's something that, although I've done on my current work project, like we use SES to send out emails, I've never actually had to find time to actually like design an email and like make it look nice. I think we use like text-based emails because um, it's more accessible or something. I don't really know. But so during my journey of like making this whole thing, um, I ran into this library called MJML. And what led me to this library is I was trying to send out emails with like styling and stuff. And the, the emails just had all messed up styling. And I was trying to understand like how do you actually make HTML, you know, beautiful marketed emails because I'd never done it before, right? So even after 10 years of coding in this industry as a professional, that's something that I never even had to learn. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is like, even if you've been coding for a long time, there's going to be stuff that you're going to be exposed to that you've never done before. And that's cool. That's, that's just part of the job, right? You have to constantly be learning and just acknowledge that you don't know everything. There's probably tons of stuff related to React I don't know, tons of stuff with like CSS I don't know. There's stuff that I once learned and I probably forgot um there's stuff that you've done like 10 20 times and then all of a sudden you just like forget about it and you have to like remind yourself that it exists so this is one of those things this mjml library I kind of came across and basically it's a way to set up emails and style them so that they look nice no matter like what email service the user opens the email like gmail or I don't know microsoft hotmail or something yahoo because I guess there's like stuff about HTML emails that I had no idea about. Like some emails, depending on how you style them, will not look good in certain um, email services. And that led me to this library. I think there's also another one called like React emails, which someone pointed me to. I was going to go ahead and check this out as well, because if, you know, writing emails in React is probably more what I'd be used to. But regardless, I found this little library. It's pretty cool because you can kind of like preview uh, your email on the side and kind of see how it looks like in, I guess, dark mode. I probably have to like make this more compatible with dark mode. That's something I didn't even think about. And it's funny because I, when I started this project, I'm like, oh, I'll make this cool little dashboard where I can actually like type in some stuff and, you know, I could preview my emails over here. Uh, just go ahead and paste in some HTML like this. And I thought I was building something like pretty cool that I actually used to help build out emails. But then like, really, if you just Google around, you'll find out that there's this that basically does exactly what I was building out. And you can take your emails and just basically copy your MJML templates. And there you go. You can see how your email is going to look. And when you send it out, you have good confidence that this is what it's going to be. And one thing that encountering this little MJML library has reminded me is that we should probably do a little bit of research before we just start diving into coding something up, right? Sometimes I like to get ahead of myself. I start coding up some cool little UI. I have this cool way in my head that I think I'm going to do something. And it's like, you know, there's probably a thousand solutions out there that do the exact same thing that you need. And in fact, there's also another thing that does exactly what I'm building, which takes your email list and sends out all your emails through SES, right? So this is like something you can buy. It's like 60 something dollars or something. And it has a lot of extra features and stuff. But again, like I wanted to build this for myself and just do something really fun. Um, so that's why I'm building this out. But uh, yeah, overall, I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you're learning how to code, don't feel overwhelmed that you don't know everything because you're never going to learn everything. There's always going to be something new that you're going to encounter. There's going to be some new DevOps thing, some new front-end thing, some new back-end thing, some new library or framework, some new design pattern, some new everything that just, you're never going to know it all. And you kind of just have to accept that you're just always going to be in this constant state of learning. 
And the moment you stop wanting to learn and stop trying to learn is when you find yourself, you know, working with a language that's like 40 years old and you're the only person who works with it anymore. But maybe that's cool. Maybe that's what you want to do. But so if you're learning how to code, just I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get discouraged if there's a bunch of stuff that you don't know, because even as someone who's been in the industry for a while, there's stuff that I don't know. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. And there's always stuff that I'm going to learn. And there's always stuff that my subscribers will point out in comments. Um, like, you know, X, Y, and Z is a better tool or whatever you can use for this. And you just got to, you know, keep an open mind and just realize that the things you know and the things you do might not be the most optimal. Um, and always try to challenge yourself and say, is there a better way to do this? Is there a smarter way to do this? Is there an existing solution that does what I'm trying to do? Anyway, let me just uh, get off my little soapbox for right now. Hope you guys enjoyed my little rant or talk or whatever. Uh, if you guys like watching, give me a thumbs up. Also, be sure to subscribe, press the bell icon, and leave a comment because it helps my channel grow. And like always, feel free to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or just find a place to talk with other developers or find a place to get help if you're stuck on a problem. Have a good day and happy coding.